Good morning. Welcome to Trading R. I am Reema Tendulkar. With me is Hormuz Fatakia, and it's turned out to be a very strong Wednesday morning. The Nifty is up 150 points. The Sensex is up 500 points. Now the question is, can the Nifty take out the recent high? So last week, the Nifty went on to hit levels of 22,180, and from there, it's retreated. So that's acted as, as a bit of a resistance level, 22,180. We're just about 30 points away from that level. Can we go ahead and conquer it? And also, what's happened is the large caps have caught up. A lot to do with Reliance Industries, but you know, yesterday or even in the morning, it was the mid caps which were outperforming, and now you've seen the large cap price action overtake. That of the mid-cap price action. Uh, so that's you know the other interesting bit in terms of Asia. It's been a mixed picture. China Hang Seng down. Uh, Kospi is mildly lower, but on the other hand, Nikkei is up close to about one and a half percent. So that's where the strength is in the Asian market picture. You know the it's all about the heavyweights, right? Yeah. Yesterday, two thirds of the Nifty losses came from Reliance, HDFC Bank, and ICICI Bank. Today, everything is offset by that one move that Reliance is giving you today because of that positive commentary from Goldman Sachs. Mm-hmm. But the key question, as you highlighted, is will you be able to cross that recent high of 20 to 181 that the Nifty made, and that is the key level to watch out for as well. Because on the downside, the levels are pretty obvious, right? The 50 DMA at 21950, then the recent swing low of 21710. So on the downside, the levels are pretty certain. On the upside as well, now the upside levels are the key. 20 to 181 is the level that we'll have to track on the Nifty. When it comes to the sectoral indices. well most of them are doing very well for themselves the real estate index continues to rebound after a uh, after a brief period of underperformance so the realty index is doing very well for itself the auto stocks are doing well the broader markets are doing well as well the small cap index is almost up a percent the mid cap index is up 6 tenths of a percent so the broader markets are continuing to do well they did well yesterday they are extending that run two stocks in particular that i wish to highlight one of them is torrent power and that stock is at the highest point of the day as we speak it is up for the fifth straight day in uh, today's trading session actually it's up for the fourth straight day 7.5% for torrent power and since the 13th of march the stock has declined only once and it's up 30% During that period, you can see that the seven-day returns almost 24 percent. In fact, we should pull up a three-month chart to see, you know, the up move that we've seen since the 13th of March, right? So that's 30, been yeah, 13th of March. So we can the see that the two. 13th of March. So it, very interesting uh, moves there on Torrent Power. Actually, all power stocks are doing very well for themselves. Be it Torrent Power, or TD Power, and the other one that I wanted to highlight was Prestige Estates. Since I spoke of real estate, Prestige Estates is up for the fifth day in a row. and before this 5 day up move it had a 8 day run where it had declined for 8 days in a row and this 5 day rally has almost recovered all the losses that the stock had made in that 8 day fall so from our levels of around 1180 the stock fell to almost 990 and now it is back at levels of 1170 so prestige estates there good going for uh, those real estate names as well but the one stock that is also doing very well in today's trading session is gravita india and that is because kotak has in, in, uh, initiated coverage on the stock and it is projecting targets of around 1200 rupees 9 and 1/2% now for gravita nigel is joining us with more details on that nigel what does kotak have to say on gravita well that's right kotak is fairly positive on gravita they've initiated coverage. Average to the buy rating target price of around twelve hundred rupees for the next three years. They are factoring in a twenty to twenty-two percent revenue and profitability growth as well. They are also working with twenty percent ROC, and they say that the company is set for a multi-year growth cycle. On the industry, they have highlighted one aspect with regard to the Indian-led recycling industry. They are saying that it's on the verge of a rapid formalization, but for the time being, it's dominated by the unorganized sector because the unorganized sector accounts for around sixty-five percent of market share. Besides that, they also make the point that Gravita currently's market share is at around six percent, but has tremendous potential to grow, and that's because the battery waste management rules 2020 2022. That's a revolutionary policy they believe, and because of this policy that's come into being, they are saying that the unorganized sector's market share will fall to around ten to around twenty-five percent in the coming years, and that's a big call out there. So that's a drastic reduction in uh, the unorganized market. On Gravita, they say that the company is playing a crucial role in the circular economy supply chain, and they've also highlighted the fact that their expansion plans, aside from lead, well, that's a good diversification strategy, and that could hold the board them well as well. For the time being, though, as we know, 
the EBITDA coming in from uh, the lead recycling is around 80 to 85 percent. But they have guided that in the time to come, well, that number, the non-lead segment could come down, could move up to around 25 percent. They've highlighted a few risks as well, which includes volatility in unhedged commodities, the change in uh, regulations, duty structure against scrap. And they're also saying that in case there is any significant investment by uh, OEMs in uh, recycling, that's what could, what could be a bit of a risk. But for the time being, the street has definitely taken note of this initiation by Kotak, and that explains why Gravita is running away. Interesting. The nine and a half percent now for Gravita India. It's not the only, not the first day that the stock is up. It's been up for four days in a row. The stock is up thirty percent in these four days, and Kotak is expecting another thirty percent up. So interesting, right? Because Kotak was the first one saying that they are not very comfortable with mid caps and small caps. Now they are initiating coverages, upgrading mm -hmm. them. There's a lot of action, lot of action coming in from uh, Kotak. That was there as another one. Gravita India, the other stock there, but the other one that is doing very well in today's session is ABB India and that is surging after UBS raised its price target on the stock. Vamakshi is joining in to explain what is making UBS bullish on ABB India. Vamakshi, what is their rationale? Well, absolutely, like you rightly pointed out, uh, there is a massive upgrade as far as the target price is concerned. And the rationale behind this upgrade is the fact that electrification and motion segments are expected to drive growth and margins for the company. Now, among many global players, there is clear focus uh, on capturing the long-term growth in electrification and ABB India is doing the same. They are expanding both their range as well as geographical presence in low, medium voltage products. And in fact, UBS has highlighted that they believe that ABB is the best play on the emerging infra scale up in especially the low and medium voltage electrification. Now, as far as the motion segment is concerned, they believe the step up in order inflow run rate is sustainable on an annual basis and the company itself is focusing on expanding its capacity in this particular segment in order to tap growth opportunities and therefore they will continue to see continued market gains. Apart from that, they believe there is ample scope for the ABB to deliver as far as the profitability is concerned. They believe that they still see more upside uh, in terms of margins despite the recent upgrades. There are some near-term concerns over the short cycle order fatigue, but there is still plenty of scope left for ABB uh, as far as new order growth across motion as well as the electrification segment is concerned. Now, given all of these factors, they've gone ahead, raised 2024-2025 PAT estimates by almost 12 to 14 percent respectively. They've also raised the target PE from around 65 times to its historical peak of 75 times. So as a result, they've maintained their buy, but a massive upgrade coming in on the target price from 5,380 per share to 7,550 per share. Okay, look at the way the stock is rising today, 6 percent up on that. But Vamakshi, what about Angel One? Uh, there is a QIP book that they've launched. They're looking to raise 1,500 crore rupees. Well, absolutely, you're right, uh, Reema. Angel One in focus, the stock is trading higher today. The company launched a QIP, and sources tell us that uh, this QIP could be around 1,500 odd crores. Now, keep in mind, uh, just a couple of uh, days ago, the company had received the shareholders' nod, and last month they received the board's nod uh, in order to raise funds up to 2,000 crores. The floor price for this uh, QIP has been determined at 2,555 rupees per share. Now, if we compare this to the closing price yesterday, it is actually coming in at a discount of almost 7 percent. But the issue price, more importantly, will be determined on April 2nd, depending on the kind of demand this QIP receives. The funds largely that the company is raising would likely be used for meeting the increased working capital requirement, for meeting exchange margin needs. They're also expanding their business, they're scaling up their AMC business, and they've recently uh, invested in a wealth management subsidiary as well. And in fact, the company, uh, in one of its releases earlier, has also highlighted that they could tap into inorganic opportunities, especially in the fintech space. Now, what analysts are saying is that the company can plough back its quarterly uh, pat, which is around 270 crores in, th in the third quarter into the business. But if the company gets funds all at once, it could, in fact, increase the pace of growth in market share. Uh, so, therefore, this could be a bit of positive for Angel One. But nevertheless, the QIP is coming in at a discount, so watch out for this counter. Very interesting because the timing of the QIP is the one uh, that 
that needs to be focused on because the stock is down 26 percent from its peak that it had made of uh, 3896 and in fact if you take a look at the small cap index when it topped out on mm. the 8th of February if you take uh, the timeline since then it is one of the worst performers on the small cap index so interesting timing for the QIP but if you take a look at the stock in absolute terms it's been an absolute outperformer because 300 rupee QIP price uh, issue price listed at a discount and now almost 10x from its IPO price there. That is Angel 1 for you, 4.5% higher. You know, one of the reasons why the stock has also come under pressure in the recent past is their gross client acquisition has slowed down for two consecutive right. months in January and February. So as of Q3, it was intact. It went up by 16% quarter on quarter. That's Q3 over Q2. But in January and February, I think maybe the correction in the mid and the small cap, but the gross client acquisition slowed down for two consecutive months, Jan and Feb. So maybe that added to the little bit of, you know, the correction that we've seen in Angel One. it would be interesting to see what numbers they come up with for the month of March when they come out with their update next month. But since for now, 4.5% higher for Angel One, 28.45 on the stock. Let's slip into a short break here. Up next, we'll discuss what's buzzing in the commodity space. Manisha Gupta joins us on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Trading Hour here on CNBC TV 18. The Nifty is continuing to go from strength to strength. 20 to 150 still remains at that level. And 20 to 180 is the level that we are watching out for on the upside on the index. But for now, let's shift focus to the commodity space. Manisha Gupta is joining in and today we are focusing on gold. Manisha, good morning. The price is showing no signs of cooling off. Oh, well, yes, that's the case. Uh, we've seen $2,200 an ounce as an all-time high. We did see correction all the way down to below 2150 as well. But remember, it is going to be about the U.S. Fed Chair Powell's speech in this week. It's also about U.S. inflation data that comes in on Friday. So ahead of that, we're looking at some choppy market. So even that very marginal decline that you can see on your screens, we are still holding around that $2,180 per ounce in case of gold prices there. Well, there is an ex expectation that the U.S. Fed rate cut could happen in the month of June. Then there's a 71 to 75 5% probability of that. That seems to be supporting the prices. There also is strong physical demand that we've seen from the Chinese retail. The global central bank buying in last couple of years has been at record highs and the first quarter of this year also has seen strong buying from various global central banks including China, Kazakhstan, Singapore, etc. Those numbers of course would come in in the next 10 or 15 days. Apart from that, the gold ETF buying globally also has been on the stronger side. We've seen net inflows in last couple of weeks. That is keeping the prices supportive. The gold prices have gained up by nearly 7.5% percent for the month of March, which the street anticipating that uh, newer highs are yet to be made in the second and third quarter of this year. You know, today, Manisha, we were chatting with Gautam Shah of Goldilocks Premium Research, and he said gold is going to be the trade of 2024, mm -hmm. and he's putting a target price of 2,500 going up to 2,700 this wow. year okay. for gold itself. So that's one bullish commentary coming through just, you know, earlier today. Thank you very much for highlighting that. As we slip into a break, here is some good news that we would like to share with you. Money Control has further strengthened its position as India's premier business news platform, beating economic times across key parameters. According to Comscore data for the month of February, Money Control has the largest number of unique visitors. It has also maintained its massive lead in page views and time spent. We would like to take this opportunity to thank you, our viewers and readers, for reposing your faith in Money Control and Network 80. Welcome back. Inching up and up, it's 22,167 on the Nifty, 162 points higher. Uh, HDFC Live, Bajaj Auto, Adani Ports, uh, BPCL, these are some stocks which are seeing some action now. Uh, but, you know, a bulk of the heavy lifting today has been done by one stock, Reliance Industries. If you pull up the contribution play, the Nifty is up 163 points. Off that, 62 points are coming courtesy Reliance Industries. And that's because of this one note by Goldman Sachs where they put a bull case of 4,500 rupees per share on Reliance. <laughs> 
It's a very interesting note, right? Because last week, if you remember, even UBS had come out with a note. They also had a price target of 3400. But the base case that Goldman Sachs is making is also 3400. They raised it from 2925 earlier. But the interesting bit, as you said, is their bull case assumption, and that bull case assumption is a 54% potential upside by FY26, and that comes up to a target of 4495 for Reliance Industries. So that is the bull case scenario there. And what Goldman Sachs is also saying is that. consolidated returns for reliance are at an inflection point now they are highlighting uh, key growth drivers for reliance going forward and all of them are related to their businesses the first up being their telecom business and they are saying that it will turn into a strong cash flow generating business and they are forecasting geo platforms to generate fee, uh, f- uh, cumulative uh, free cash flow of 12 billion dollars over fy25 to 27 compared to just under 2 billion dollars that they had generated between fy22 and 24 and they are also pricing in for a rise in their arpu in the second half of 2024 the second bit is for the retail business and where they are saying that the retail business is entering a phase of steady expansion and stronger return ratios as we move forward and that 3 years of aggressive expansion that reliance has done has given them a leadership position in the offline grocery retail market domestically and but they say that the ebitda margins from current levels are unlikely to expand from here as the mix the product mix is shifting towards grocery and the brands business is likely to see ex- uh, unlikely less likely to see exponential growth in the next 2 to 3 years they come up to the oil to chemicals business as well where they say that there is a multi year refining outlook and the chemicals business has bottomed out for now and that the leverage over the petchem margins that reliance has that is curt- to see the low cost advantage that they have and the capacity expansion that they have undertaken and the new energy business as well and as the hyper integration of the new energy business is likely to drive growth higher returns for reliance going forward and for the new energy business they say that the capex that the company is undertaking may be spread across two phases both upstream and downstream uh, but the key part here is that the cash that they will generate from the current energy business will be enough to fund the capex of the new energy business now uh, despite the run that reliance has seen recently goldman sachs is saying that the risk reward is still favorable they are expecting sustained returns over the next 3 years there are multiple uh, stronger pipelines of catalyst going forward and they are expecting the market also to focus on the company's leverage which is likely to go down going forward now some of the key risks that they have highlighted there's a lower than expected refining and chemical margins that is one a lower than expected arpu for geo that is the other one and the lower than expected market share and margins in the retail business and lastly project delays and higher future capex now they are expecting the capex to taper down sequentially but in case the capex remains elevated that will be a key risk for reliance industries but all in all an extremely positive note from goldman sachs the stock is up and about leading contributor on the nifty and a standard disclaimer on your screen okay peak capex behind reliance industries the focus will now be on generating returns and goldman sees higher levels in store for reliance but moving on to cdsl and asta dm healthcare under pressure after big block deals took place in the morning vivek is here with more details vivek Well that's right so when you're talking about CDSL you know just prior to market open we had highlighted about how we had access the term sheet and there was a large likely block deal going to happen along expected lines the block deal did happen so 7.4% of the total equity changed hands uh, now as per the term sheet we understand that standard chartered bank uh, sold their entire stake in today's block deal remember the floor price you know that they had kept was almost 1672 rupees a share which works out to almost a block deal size of 151 million dollars that standard chartered has mapped, mopped up from this particular block trade The second stock, like you mentioned, Astor DM. Again, we had highlighted earlier today that uh, we understood that Olympus Capital Asia Investments were looking to sell 9.8 percent of the total 18.9 percent stake that they held in the company along expected lines. Another large block deal happened just at the market open. Uh, the offer price range was between 400 to 432. So, at the lower end of the price range, you know, Olympus Asia managed to mop up almost 1,950 crore rupees. Both of these stocks continue to remain under pressure after the large blocks. Interesting. They're both stocks trading lower between five to seven percent. Aster DM is down seven percent after that block. It is a pretty big block as well, ten percent. So pretty a uh, lot of supply coming into the market. There's seven and a half percent for uh, Aster DM pull up. CDSL as well. It was down five and a half percent when the block deals took place. 
uh, some 9 percent equity was exchanged there as well and a uh, slight recovery from the lowest point of the day but the stock still remains under pressure down four and a half percent at 1707 is cdsl good time to get in a technical check on the markets mitesh thakkar is joining in mitesh good morning thank you for joining in the index is now around about its 20 day moving average 20 to 180 is that level uh, do you see that the nifty has enough legs to a cross 20 to 180 and move higher and b have an expiry above the 20 to 200 mark tomorrow see i think um, nifty i think you know today's movement has been definitely surprising and i said that uh, we are looking at some kind of range and uh, we might see the nifty you know kind of be in this range of 22 uh, 250 on the upper side to about 21, 900, 950 on the downside. And we are now heading towards the upper to the range. The answer to your question, whether the Nifty will have the strength to get past those levels and make new highs, I think will lie in the performance of the bank Nifty. The bank Nifty, if you can notice, is slightly, you know, subdued compared to the Nifty. It's also come off the day side. And that is the pivot which it needs to clear. 46, 950, 47,000. If the bank Nifty can start getting past that, then I think, you know, we'll turn positive on both the indices and look at uh, continuation on the upside. Okay. Uh, any uh, stocks and what about Reliance Industries? Do you want to talk about the levels on Reliance Industries? So, you know, uh, you know I have disclaimer, I have some positions on the bullish side in the FNO segment on the Reliance, uh, this thing. So, very clearly today is uh, that uh, fundamental report and then the subsequent price action suggests that some kind of a move has started in Reliance. It could possibly retest the recent highs, you know, so that level of uh, 3,000 to about 3,020 is the first target area for the stock price. But uh, once it starts getting past that, then I think the stock could even head towards 3100. All this with a disclaimer that, you know, I have some options, positions, uh, call options in the April expiry. So we have a positive bias and the invested interest as well. Having said that, uh, on the stock side, TVS Motors is something which has come on the radar. That's a buy with a stock below 2100. So keep two, three points below 2100. Look for targets of 2180 to begin with on the upside. And the other stock uh, is PI Industries, where some continuation is happening. So Keep us stable with 3,800. Look for targets of 3,900. Interesting. Thanks a lot, Mitesh, for joining in and sharing your views on the index and on specific stocks as well. Reliance is the 3024 is the record high for Reliance. That is mm. the level that Mitesh was talking about as well on the upside, testing its previous record levels. But TVS Motors and PI Industries, the two recommendations from Mitesh this morning. Time for a short break now. Up next, we'll discuss the market fundamentals with Madan Gopal Ramu from Sundram Alternate Assets. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Back with us here on Trading R, the Nifty is now at the highest point of the day, 22,172 is the day's high that it made and it is now trading slightly above the 20 day moving average which is 22,162. So good going there for the index and Reliance Industries continues to pull the index higher. It's now up almost 3% as we speak, the lead contributor to the Nifty upside 2966 on Reliance Industries. So good going there for the index heavyweight as well. Let's now invite Madan Gopal Ramu, the fund manager and head of equity at Sundaram Alternate Assets to discuss market fundamentals, his top sectoral bets and much more. Madan Gopal, good morning. Thank you so much for joining in. Good I'd like morning. to start off by asking you about uh, the real estate space and uh, it's been a pretty mixed bag for real estate. The stocks have moved from strength to strength over the last 12 months. But there has been a bit of a correction. Now there is a rebound as well. Do you do you find valuation comfort in this space, considering how stocks like Prestige, Soba, DLF have run up in the recent times? We don't own much of real estate uh, primarily because uh, it's very getting very difficult to judge the cycle from a short term perspective. Uh, the stocks have rallied a lot. Uh, we, the demand that has come back in uh, 2023, uh, we we are not very sure like whether it will continue in 2024. Uh, we are seeing already uh, job cuts in IT sector, 
So we need to be a little more cautious on uh, how the real estate sector demand will continue to do so. At present, we don't own much of real estate stocks in our portfolios. Any new additions that you've done? You manage four portfolios, which includes, you know, a multi-cap fund, you have emerging stars fund, you have a small cap fund. In the last one month, can you share some of the recent additions that you've made across and across which portfolio? Sure. Um, so uh, we have been, uh, uh, we have added some stocks in the auto space. Uh, if you look at auto space, uh, the thing that is really working on is the premiumization. Uh, every new launch, every new car launch or a, a two-wheeler launch, you are seeing uh, a better digital clusters coming in or connectivity with the vehicle is improving. Uh, with that, what is happening, uh, we are seeing content per vehicle is increasing for some of the auto and companies. Uh, while the overall volume growth of auto sector might be in uh, high single digit, uh, but you will benefit if you get into some of these auto angs, uh, which are growing double the volume growth of the auto space itself. Uh, so we have added some stocks like uh, Unominda, uh, Madhasan Sumi, and Prekol in, in, in our portfolios. All these three companies are beneficiaries of the content per vehicle story and, uh, and, uh, and the premiumization story that is happening in the auto space. So that's a new area where we have made some allocation. On top of it, I think uh, we continue to uh, be very bullish on uh, uh, the NBFC space as against banks as such for the next two, three years uh, uh, growth perspective. Uh, on the consumption space, we are always positive on the consumer discretionary compact to FMCG, uh, which we continue to bet on and uh, keep adding stocks wherever we find comfort. Uh, on manufacturing side, uh, we are very comfortable on the power sector side, where we have stocks like DHL. So this is how broadly the portfolio is positioned. Interesting. I was reading a note, uh, Madan Gopal, and you have also initiated positions in Zomato. And the stock over the last 12 months, if you can pull up the 12-month chart, it's up almost 250-270%. It's more than tripled. And your note also says that valuations have also run up for the stock. But what is driving your bullishness at these valuations? Because you say that it is just, it is just reflecting the current earnings of its food business. Sure. Um, actually, Zomato, we, did, we added in one of the portfolio recently, but Zomato has been there with our primary portfolios for the last uh, one year or so. We started adding Zomato when it was 50 rupees sort of a stock price. It has almost gone up some uh, three times from those levels. Uh, uh, so uh, so the, the point with which we entered Zomato was Zomato will be able to have a bargaining power from the restaurants and able to charge them better. And that's what happened. Uh, they almost increased their commission rates uh, by almost additional 20 rupees in the last two-year time period, which has helped them to improve their profitability in the food delivery business. On top of it, right now, what we feel is uh, their, uh, their, their advertisement revenue can go up because restaurants want to have a, uh, have a higher uh, delivery uh, mix in their, uh, in, in their business. So they, the good restaurants will go and don't mind to pay a little bit more uh, uh, to to the to uh, food delivery partners like uh, Zomato or Swiggy, so that's something which can continue to play for the next uh, two to three year also. In addition to it, we are what we are witnessing right now is uh, the these guys are able to monetize from the customer side also. They used to have uh, uh, the food delivery charge net of discounts, not much they used to make, but today they are making a spread on that also, which is also improving. So uh, advertisement uh, uh, revenue improving and uh, the uh, charges from the customers. Uh, these are certain uh, new things that are happening in these business, uh, which is adding on top of the expectation that we had in the food delivery business. So this is one. On top of it, if you look at um, uh, the uh, uh, Blinkit, when we invested, we did not factor much of a valuation from Blinkit. But today, Blinkit is, uh, is, is turning around much faster than what we expected. Uh, if, if you look at even in Blinkit, they are able to charge or monetize the convenience factor on the customers. So this is what the new developments that are happening in Zomato, which we feel over the next, say, uh, say five years or so, as the penetration level increases for these businesses, uh, as the economies of scale plays out, you will also see these companies able to monetize both from the customers as well as from the restaurants. Uh, that will keep their uh, earnings growth on an upward move and keep surprising the market. You cannot take a one-year view in these stocks. You have to invest and wait for at least two to three years to make a substantial return. Uh, so that's 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 the reason if we continue to hold in our existing portfolios we have actually added in one of the other portfolios uh, which you are referring to okay 
Uh, home first finance has been a part across many of your portfolios and this stock has underperformed uh, in the correction that ensued in the broader market. How would you approach home first finance now? Home first from the point that we added has done well for us. It has almost yes. doubled. Yes, as you said, it has underperformed the small cap uh, banking index. Um, the, 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 one of the reasons is uh, home first is into affordable housing business and uh, we had some P selling happening in the stocks continuously. That is one. Uh, we don't mind that because we like to add these stocks when the P is selling and when the P is selling is over, you will get a good valuation uh, coming back. Right now, the, port, the stock is trading at around uh, two and a half times price to book value. And if you look at the company is as potential to deliver something like uh, 25, 30 percent growth on a sustainable basis. Companies predominantly into uh, into Western market and gone into South South markets recently. And I think they will establish presence in uh, 15 states and uh, uh, become a pan-India sort of a player. Uh, so uh, the growth here is given uh, compared to uh, 10 to 15 percent growth that you are looking at banking space. Uh, here the growth will be substantially better. Margins took a beating primarily because the rate increase cycle. And now that is behind you. So next two years, if you expect the rate cycle to normalize or even come down, uh, you should bet on names like this because their margins will expand now. As against the uh, banks, where the margins can go through a correction, um, as the cost of funds uh, uh, picks up uh, increases in the next, say, uh, one year or so. And later on, when the rate cut happens, also banks will go through initially a margin compression story. So during those periods, uh, NBFCs like Home First, uh, which, which have a, a very high sort of a margin, uh, uh, which has gone through some compression uh, in the last one year, can start improving. You will see earnings upgrade happening in these names. And currently, the valuations are very compelling. You are getting a high growth name like Home First at around two and a half times price to book value. Uh, they have traded in the past uh, names which are growing like this around four times price to book value also. Uh, even if they were, go, were to go back to three, three and a half times price to book value, in addition to the earnings growth, uh, you will see a good amount of money to be made in names like this. Interesting. Thanks a lot, Madan Gopal, for sparing time and joining us this morning and sharing your views on the markets and on stocks like Zomato as well as Home First Finance. Time for a short break here on Trading R. When we return, we'll get you excerpts from our ex exclusive conversation with market veteran Ramdev Agrawal of Motila Loswal Financial Services. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Back with us on Trading R and the Nifty continues to push higher, 20 to 180 now. As that is the level that we were talking about at the start of the show, 20 to 181, that's the level we need to track on the index. And pushing it higher is Reliance Industries now 3.5% higher is Reliance growing from strength to strength, 29.75, almost 29.80 now for Reliance Industries. But two other stocks that are contributing may not be in equal proportion compared to Reliance, but punching as per their weight is Maruti. That is one that is also trading with gains of 3.5%, 12,650 now on Maruti there. And the other one is Bajaj Auto, that is 9,200 now, 3% higher. And it's now inching closer to its buyback price. It just completed its buyback yesterday. Mm. And it's now getting closer to its buyback price of 10,000 rupees. So good going there for both the auto stocks as well as for Reliance Industries. But AMCs are the ones that we need to focus on as of now. And they are in focus because of a brokerage note, again, by Kotak Institutional Equi Equities. And since we like to keep Vamakshi busy, she's back <laughs> with all the details. Vamakshi, tell us more. Well, absolutely. Keep an eye out on all AMC stocks today. There's a note coming in from Kotak and uh, it is an interesting note. Uh, they've highlighted that AMC stocks are trading at a premium valuation of almost 55 to 60 percent to the broader markets and the current valuations of AMC stocks largely capture the relative differences in business performance as well as growth outlook. They also conducted some analysis of early data in terms of flows and this early data suggests that a soft landing could be expected for small as well as mid-cap fund flows and 
and in fact uh, it also suggests that flows in the small cap category in the small cap category has actually seen net outflows while on the other hand mid cap funds have been positive but over here we're seeing relatively lower flows come into the mid cap space but on the other hand categories such as large cap flexi cap hybrid fronts all of uh, all of these uh, categories have seen an uptick in flow suggesting there could be a possible shift in the preference uh, now talking about individual names they've highlighted that the growth tailwinds is the strongest for the hdfc amc but they've downgraded the stock uh, from add to reduce and that is mainly on account of uh, relative valuations uh, fully capturing the outperformance but nevertheless they've gone ahead and raised the target price to 3750 rupees per share and they have also highlighted that they await better entry points for hdfc amc on the other hand, they've upgraded ABSL AMC from reduce to add given recent underperformance. They've maintained the target price for this counter at 500 rupees per share and they believe that the stock trades at attractive valuations, but there is some visibility needed as far as turnaround and performance and flows in flagship categories is concerned. They've retained an ad rating for Nippon, target price of 510. They have highlighted that the risk reward out here is relatively more attractive given the recent correction, strong SIP book as well as the broad of flows across categories and lastly on UTI AMC they've re maintained their reduced rating uh, they've lowered the target price to 880 rupees per share highlighting that this company has the weakest fund performance across four AMC's resulting in outflows for the past four to five quarters so on the back of this note keep an eye out on all of these AMC counters Thank you very much uh, for that. It's time to get back to the markets and get an opinion now. My colleague Surbi caught up with veteran investor Ramdev Agarwal to discuss his portfolio construct for the medium term. He says that the Nifty can double in the next five years and the sectors that he likes are capital market related plays, real estate, defense and power. And these are also sectors that are likely to outperform. He shares his take on HDFC Bank given its recent underperformance. See, first thing is you should remain allocated. Hmm. The staying out of market is not going to help because we don't know as we are talking market will be up 2% or down 2%. You know, yeah. it is that kind of uh, uh, momentum is there. So you be allocated because the long term outlook is very good. Mm. I have stayed in the market for 45 years. Mm. I mean, I'm really grandpa of this market. You, you started, started by in the 80s, right? 1980. 80. 1980 when index was 100. Sensex oh, was 100. Gosh. I have seen <laughs> index growing by 7, 27, 30 times. X dividend, come dividend would be almost 1000 times. Wow. Forces are gathering pace mm. to favor India. Mm. So my sense is this, is this journey is going to be the most exciting journey. Mm. Now here, how do we look at things? How do we develop themes? Where are the big trends? Yeah. So which are the early trends and mm. where things can be big? Like say, uh, say like capital markets, I said, it's just right. a three years old trend. Right. I think if, if we are going to go from uh, 150 million to say 500 million mm. in next 10 years, mm. I think mm. we have... So there's a long runway. Long run, and it's a very consolidated business, mind you. Yeah. It's not a very spread out business. Mm -hmm. When we started in 87, the mm. turnover was 200 crores per day. Mm. Mm. And there were 500 brokers, they were not able to settle the markets. Mm. Today, we are doing, do you know how much we are doing? 400 lakh crores per day. Total turnover. Total turnover. Yeah. And there are only 50 brokers. <laughs> so it's a, it's a real explosion that's happened explosion. in the capital markets. Yeah. It's still going at 50%. Sure, sure, so sure. So I think we have a, see, whatever is digitized, mm. I think it just scales up like mad. So that's one big theme. Yeah. The, let me ask you about the themes that are already now about a year old yeah, yeah. and get your sense on whether there is more yeah, steam or not. Should be. The auto is doing well, CapEx is doing well, defense is doing well, medical is doing well. So those are the things which are which are mm. trending very well. Mm. But there are, the real fun is mm. buying something which is not trending well right now yes. or at a very early stage, mm. but eventually is going to become very large. And do you see something like that? Yeah, of course. So, so, if no, you no, could I don't share, have, no, no. not so stock names, like, but just ideas. Like, like, yeah. So, sell so real estate. Mm. Real estate was in dumps say, three years back. Yeah. And now they have got up and growing, but still it's the early stage for them. They are repairing the balance sheet still. Mm -hmm. But this sector, along with the stock market, mm. can become very large. Mm. Because still the housing is not done. And as you become rich, mm. I mean, the biggest growth sector is going to be uh, real estate. Because, because you that's want the to invest in, in, in a house. Yeah. So, yeah. now the issue is that how they use the power of market cap, mm. power of uh, their valuation mm. to uh, to sp speed up their project execution and give better value to their customers. But what about the stocks? Uh, do you still find value in real estate stocks? I see. Don't see. You have to. You are the investor. You have to figure. I am telling you the broad trend in the sure. economy, uh, broad sure. trend in the sure. sector. 
फ्रॉम देयर यू कैन फाइंड सम स्मॉल कैप इन चेन्नई और आई मीन एवरी सिटी हैज देयर ओन रियल एस्टेट कंपनी एंड ब्रिलियंट गाय कुड बी देयर सो यू हैव टू फाइंड दोज स्टॉक्स एंड इन्वेस्ट इन देम ऑफकोर्स लार्ज कैप डी एल एफ यूर ओबेरॉय your load high and those things are listed you can really go and see what is happening there absolutely so, absolutely so that sector can be very large yeah. defense expenditure infra expenditure auto expenditure mm. uh, but actually when the economy booms mm. literally every sector participates in that sure some sure. someone like uh, capex is going to be very big thing as you mm. go forward mm. very so, big means seriously very large so you know i completely understand where your optimism is coming yeah. from because when we talk to these companies the managements mm-hmm. they talk about their order books they talk about the opportunity they caught they talk about government spending uh, but just broadly speaking uh, in terms of how much the market has already discounted whether it's defense whether it's capital goods there is energy transition power now i mean there's so much of even power, thermal, yeah. thermal capacity power, being added power uh, your uh, uh, fossil fuel transition yeah. your wind solar those things are not even started so even in terms of valuations there's still comfort and don't worry too much about the why are so obsessed about valuation pehle aap samjho sahi kya cheez value kar raha hai you size it up i mean we cannot size up in this 10 minutes sure, sure every sure. company you have to go and figure out what is the prospect for the company what the company is going there mm-hmm. go and understand stay two days with them mm-hmm. then you'll understand some sense of it uh, sure. what is there sure. so markets are not very good in discounting very long term mm-hmm. they are very good in fact where they're uh, they're very excited about the short term and mm. they have no clue about very long term mm. no clue at all mm. and that's why you make money you see mm. in uh, hdfc bank uh, uh, or uh, um, uh, even infosys and all mm. you made money back ended not in the front ended mm. mm. i mean in 96 97 it is very clear hdfc bank is a winner mm. or even 2000 it was winner you mm. see after that what has happened mm. you got 30% return for next 20 years mm. how come and now so now yes the story still remains same if you understand Yeah, I mean, this is a time to really go and do research mm. and figure out what is the future of it. Are they going to lose market share, mm. or are they going to build on the market share? Because the the credit growth or uh, the banking needs of the country mm. is going to grow at fifteen, sixteen percent. So the whole call is if they keep going market share, mm. they will grow fifteen percent plus. Fifteen mm. mm. kapi me apko milta hai. Interesting thoughts there from Ramdev Agrawal, and since we were on the subject of Maruti, the stock made a day's high of twelve seven two four, and that took the company's market cap past the four lakh crore rupee mark. So good going there for Maruti. But we head into a short break. But before that, we have a big announcement to share with you all. We are launching CNBC TV 18's first ever live personal finance webinar. CNBC TV 18 Accelerate the Personal Finance Handbook with Sonia Shinoy, where she'll be joined by three well-known experts on Saturday, the 11th of May at. 9 a.m. onwards we'll be diving into everything you need to know to master your finances and learn how to grow your wealth be it insurance tax saving managing your portfolio retirement planning there's lots to learn and lots to do whether you're in your 20s 30s or even the 40s this live webinar is for you we have limited seats so don't miss this chance register now scan the qr code to register or log on to cnbctv18.com and we'll see you on the 11th of may Welcome back as we wrap up on trading hour we're going to leave you with an exclusive conversation my colleague Tim Sijay Puria uh the conversation that she had with the consumer affairs secretary Rohit Kumar Singh they discussed a whole host of topics like surrogate ads EV batteries uh, they also spoke about the government's concern on misleading ads listen in to that conversation on the other side of the break will be half time report thank you for watching the show yes we are concerned of misleading uh, advertisements because we think that the rights of the consumers you know uh, get adequately uh, the get adversely affected by misleading because you're promising something which is not there like we had a case where uh, in corona times a shirt manufacturer said if you wear my shirt you will not get covid and they were duly penalized probably india's one of largest shirt manufacturers so we keep a close eye on uh, misleading advertisements we also work with other agencies uh, like aski advertising standard council of india which are a source of information for us for misleading advertisements you would have heard of the initiative of this department on ias coaching institutes who were claiming success for some of the candidates who did not even you know take part in that uh, coaching mm-hmm. of that institute so we have struck hard on them but overall the uh, menace of misleading advertisement has to be curbed because under the consumer protection act it's a misleading 
uh, it's an unfair trading practice and it needs to be curbed because uh, consumer cannot be taken for a ride by providing uh, misleading information through advertisements. Another key area is surrogate, surrogate advertisements where a lot of alcohol manufacturers were penalized. They were told not to get into surrogate advertisements. Your view uh, and what should be a forward-looking view of this department? So uh, surrogate advertising is a way where uh, the uh, industry like alcohol and tobacco they try and circumvent the advertising regulation uh, whether it is banned and they try and you know use it as a extension of brand extension so like there will be an alcohol uh, brand this will sell glasses with the same brand name so that is not permitted and we engaged with the industry uh, in Mumbai and also in Delhi and we said no you cannot do this and we also have guide set of guidelines ready and uh, we've also asked them that Suppose sometimes they come with an excuse that, you know, I'm not selling this alcohol, but I'm just selling a glass or a soda water or a CD or drinking uh, water, uh, the mineral water. So we say, no, you have to give us detail. And uh, CCPA, which I chair now, has just issued an order about a week back that they have to give us the, the value of the advertising mm -hmm. on the extended brand vis-a-vis -vis the actual revenue they get from the sales mm. because any uh, normal business practice will have you advertise in proportion of the revenues of that product. Mm. So if it is out of proportion, that means the surrogate advertising is being indulged into and that's an unfair trading practice. Another key area was uh, coming up with guidelines on battery manufacturers which are used for electric vehicles. A lot of electric vehicles were actually, you know, uh, still trying to circumvent the basic guidelines. Where are we? What is the view now? And uh, how will government try and uh, monitor this space in the future? So there are two aspects when it comes to EV batteries. I think you are referring to hmm. EV batteries. So one is performance and safety aspect for which Ministry of Transport and the Institute in Pune called ARAI hmm. that is making standards and norms. What we were concerned with was the standards for battery swapping. Hmm. So battery swapping is uh, you have a two-wheeler or a three-wheeler. You go to a, something like a petrol pump. You give your old battery, pick up a new battery and move on. Hmm. So a lot of uh, work had gone into making standards for that. But then after consulting with all the stakeholders, we realized that if you prescribe standards of size of the type of the connector or the battery management system which is BMS then you are actually stifling innovation you cannot prescribe standards for an industry which is still growing mm. and there are technologies coming up lithium ion is there then of course there's talk of sodium and solid state and other uh, chemical technologies in battery so if you prescribe a standard now then you are stifling innovation. So we said, okay, performance and safety, yes, we should have standards. But on the other thing, the, let the standards evolve and let these be horizontal kind of standards. So that is the current thinking in the government.